Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I'm actually on site here today. I got a project that a friend of mine has asked me to take a look at. I've done a lot of work on this house over the last three or four years, and uh, uh, he had asked me to take a look at, uh, he's got a set of iron double gates that I didn't do, by the way. He had them done by someone else. And uh, they're mounted to these uh, to these concrete columns, and apparently one of them, uh, one of the brackets is pulling away from the column, and it's uh, like it happened a couple of times, and he's asked me if I could uh, perhaps make something a little bit more heavy duty, and uh, that's right up my alley. So let's go and take a look at the problem and see what we can do to fix it. All right, so uh, here we are on site, and there's the double gates. The one that's got the problem is one with the gate open right here. So let's go up and take a look at it and see what's going on. Well, you can clearly see that uh, it appears that the around here the other way, the other sun, that this bracket is broken off the, the concrete column. And it looks like it may have happened uh, a couple of times. It looks like a repair job down there. Uh, so I think what the goal is here is to make more of a bigger bracket. I'm not certain what I'm gonna do. Um, probably get a big old piece of angle iron. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a foot or so big, maybe some six inch, five inch or six inch angle, wrap the corner, put several, a couple, you know, eight bolts in there. Uh, and hopefully that uh, will solve the problem. Go ahead and fabricate a bracket very similar to what's right here. And uh, hopefully that'll take care of the problem. So let me get some measurements, figure out the material I'm gonna use, try to figure out how I'm gonna do this. And let's get back to the shop and start today's video. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and take this bracket off and bring it back with me to the shop. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do this. Uh, I'm not going to be able to film taking this off because this is a two-man operation here. I can't hold the camera and do this. So um, basically, all I'm going to be doing is pulling this pin right here, and then we've got a couple of bolts that are already broken, lodged loose. I got a couple. Uh, right here. I'm just going to pull this off and just take the whole bracket with me. I'll go ahead and leave the closer right down here and uh, we'll take this back to the shop. All right, so I'm going to have pulled the pin. I've set that thing down there and uh, <laughs> check this out. These are actually not even tight. So I'm going to attempt to just take this off right here. Uh, uh. This one right here. Now the paint's a little bit on the threads. Ooh, that one came off. And the washer. This one's a, this one's just a little tight. I got a little crescent wrench right here. I gotta get past the paint. What I'm trying to do is get to where I can take this thing off without it completely falling off. All right, there's that. Easy. All right, so now I should be able to just pull this off the wall. Just like that. Hmm. All right, well, there it is. There's the damage to the wall. All right, let's get this thing back and get something made, something a little bit more heavy duty. All right, so the material of choice here is some six inch angle iron, five sixteenths of an inch thick, uh, and it's about a foot long. I've also got some three sixteenths uh, flat metal there and a piece of three eighths by two inch flat bar stock. The very first thing I'm doing is scribing. We're gonna cut four holes on either side of it. And I'm marking these holes are slightly off center. They're there for a reason, so they can have a bitter bite, bigger bite inside of the column. All right, so I'm gonna start off by just uh, thanking our new channel supporter here, Champion Cutting Tools. Uh, uh, they've got a, a huge line of cutting tools such as drill bits, angular cutters, hole cutters, reamers, steel cutting blades, taps, dies, and a whole lot more. If you're interested in something like this, you can check them out at championcuttingtool.com. So I'm working with the little brute right here. This is a... Uh, a mag drill that uh, I've got a couple different sizes, but this small little one right here is really handy for situations, tight accesses, cuts vertically, horizontally, a little bit more lighter weight and a little bit more compact. Uh, and you can just see in this situation right here, it, it's really ideal. 
got a really strong magnet and it doesn't take much to uh, to just push that handle right through the material it's perfect for what I'm doing Now you can see how easy it is to uh, maneuver and move around and then uh, just a little bit of lube on there to help uh, protect the cutting tool and provide a nice smooth cut. All right, well, eight holes drilled. Uh, I just want to countersink bit right here and just kind of cut the edges off a little bit and flatten them off. I don't want to have any burrs to be able to catch my fingers on. You know, I got this cut at the uh, metal supply store, and uh, it was just better for me. It's a lot easier. The saw's a lot bigger than mine for especially material this big. So I just take my angle grinder and, and just smooth off all the edges right there. It also had a little bit of rust to it. And while I was at it, uh, I just kind of skimmed a little bit of that rust off the surface. Now there's no chance of uh, me uh, snagging my fingers or anybody else cutting themselves on the sharp edges. All right, piece of two inch by three eighths flat bar stock. Now there's nothing real special here. I'm just trying to replicate the same exact uh, shape, design and, and thickness and size or whatever uh, to what they have right here. And I just, uh, the adjustments were, uh, I want them to be the same. All right, so first look at the new uh, champion cutoff saw right there. And that worked really good. Cut that through like butter. Now this existing piece right here had uh, two holes in it. Uh, looks like they only used the one on the outside, but again, I, I'm not certain. Maybe it's uh, going to be adjusted down the road. So I want to go ahead and, and put them both in there just in case they, they need to have that for the adjustment. All right, so I'm going to drill a pilot hole here first. Uh, it just, uh, you know, three eighths hole. It's nice to, uh, to drill a pilot hole first it just makes that uh, second hole that much easier to drill you know this drill press here I, I gotta say uh, I'm not really pleased with this I, I I've had it probably for a year or so and I gotta make a change and uh, I, I see that change coming here pretty soon I'm not sure what it is I'm gonna do but uh, I'm not real happy with this thing this doesn't seem to have the power all right switched out the drill bit and with a quarter inch hole previously then this 3 8 hole, it's just really easy to go through there. All right, so the existing piece has got a, a kind of rounded edge, a little radius. Uh, you can just see, um, and it's, you, it was probably like that, uh, you know, just so the closer's got a little bit of room and it doesn't bind up. I just grabbed a washer with the same type of radius and uh, made my measurements and connecting the lines. And I'm just trying to achieve something that's very similar. All right, over to the port band, and I'm just gonna take some of the meat off of her before I get over to the uh, Burt King and clean it up. I got a lot of people ask me, you know, what, what type of blade do I use? This is a, this is a DeWalt port band, and I've used the 10, uh, the 14, the 18, the 22 tooth per inch blade, and this is the 18. Uh, it seems to work the best for me in all around uh, surfaces. All right, over to the Burt King. Now that I've taken most of the metal off right there, it's just to clean it up and clean up the edges and uh, absolutely no problem for the burking there. It does a really good job of, of smoothing things out. Just deburr those holes. All right, time for a little bit of assembly. So there's the old bracket and this is the new piece and a new bracket. And I've made my measurements and I've got it lined up right where it needs to be. I just got a mag square on there and uh, a regular square, just be sure everything's nice and square and plumb before I go ahead and get started. And we're operating off the Propulse 200 here today. I'm using uh, method Spray Arc. And uh, you can see that I'm cranking this thing up full, 629 inches a minute. And I'm gonna add a couple volts to it, what they've offered me, and I'm running about 60 CFH. And that Spray Arc process is super smooth and fluid. And I'm telling you, it's bright, it's hot, it's fast, and it's clean. There's no spatter if you've never done it. Um, you know, I use it mostly on thicker material. Like I say, this is, uh, you know, almost 3 8 plate, really. 5 16 2 3 8 Works really well. All right, this is a piece of 3 16 uh, 
plate and I'm just making the gusset here. Now this is the only thing that's a little bit different than the last one. Uh, this is, I've got a little bit more room so I can go ahead and, and make a bigger gusset uh, for it. I don't think this is gonna be in the way of uh, any of the operation of the, of the opener. And the port band does a pretty good job of uh, cutting it up. Just like that. All right, I just want to take it over the Burke King, kind of round the edges a little bit, soften that up. There's no reason to have everything nice and sharp. Put a little notch in the very back right there to give it relief for the weld. And that just fits in there like that. Once again, get everything plumbed up. Now you can see I've got it offset to the side, and that's because the other one was offset to the side. Don't know if there was a reason for that, but I'm just putting it in there. The last thing I need is to have to take this thing out and it did not work the way it's supposed to because I didn't make it the same as the uh, existing bracket. Once again, the spray arc really is nice, a nice, uh, nice form of welding and thicker material. It's fun to do too. It's quiet, no spatter, runs in there like water. It's nice. All right, so just a couple things left right here. Uh, I would have done this a little bit differently, but again, I'm not certain. I'm just trying to match what they have there. The only reason that I could think that this little tab and the hole that is drilled in there, from what I could tell, the only reason why those things are there is to hold up some cables uh, that are that are attached to the closer, just so they don't hang down. Uh, you know, I might have done something a little bit different, but but once again. Uh, I just wanted to do with the, you know, what the existing one is for now, and, and hopefully that'll that'll uh, suffice. All right, so we're installing this thing now, and uh, just a rotor hammer. Uh, I'm using some uh, three and a half inch screw anchors from Hilti, and these things are amazing uh, when you're attaching to concrete. Uh, basically, you just drill it out, and you just drive these things in, and never will this thing come off uh, the wall. It is a solid, strong um, connection. And with eight of those in there, bracket's never gonna go anywhere. All right, there it is, all hooked up. Everything seems to be working good, and it's a big improvement from what they had before. This is a fun little project. I love doing these types of projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.